Life is tough in the late Cretaceous, even for the mighty dinosaurs. Arguably, the toughest time of their lives are the first few years, when they are most vulnerable. Though many species do take care of their young initially, theropods are well known for this parental care. Scorpio ovenator is no exception. Six meters long and almost a ton, they are considered medium-sized predators. Though when they hatch, they aren't even 30 centimeters, and so are protected by their mother for almost a year. After that, the mother will lay another clutch of eggs, and has to chase away her previous offspring, so she can focus on the next lot. Out on their own, the young are now a meter and a half long, and far from safe, being no match for the majority of the fully grown dinosaurs they share their home with. One little male has been on a dangerous journey for a few years now. Just when he begins to get a handle on the environment he lives in, something new and dangerous seems to appear. One of the earliest threats he remembers were the Aeoni Raptor, almost as large as a fully grown Scorpiovenator, though more lightly built and slightly faster. Numerous times his mother had fended off these predators during their first year, and after that, he lost multiple siblings once they were on their own. These Megaraptors were a constant threat that they either hid from or didn't survive. It isn't just predators that the small Scorpiovenator are threatened by. Massive herbivores were also dangerous. A Stigmarasaura, for instance, are small for sauropods, but still weigh 10 tons, and can flatten most carnivores with ease. On the other end of the scale is Argentinosaurus, one of the largest animals ever to have existed, standing 16 meters tall and weighing over 80 tons. To the eyes of the young Scorpiovenator, they are as if the mountains themselves came to life and walked amongst them. Though easy enough to spot and avoid, even staying away from their pillar-like legs doesn't mean smaller animals are safe, as the young Scorpiovenator found out when an Argentinosaurus was feeding on branches just above them, with its long neck stretched out. It broke a branch while foraging, and when the branch fell to the ground, it landed on one of the juveniles, breaking its back. Without even trying or noticing, the Titan had taken a life. Though it was the Aeoni Raptor that soon found and ate the paralyzed juvenile, allowing the others to escape. There were massive carnivores here as well, and one of the largest was Maraxes, a 10 meter, 4.5 ton Cacharodontosaur that in groups could target even sauropods. Fortunately, they did not usually hunt other predators that were too small to be worth it. But if they were hungry enough, the colossal Maraxes would hunt just about any animal, and as two of the Scorpiovenator's siblings found out, they were fast for their size. If caught off guard, the chance of outrunning them was slim. After years of dodging nearly every other dinosaur in the area, going from feeding on insects to ornithopods, struggling through droughts and floods, the young male Scorpiovenator had survived but he was the only one of those that hatched alongside him left. It was merely three weeks ago that his last sibling was ambushed by a duo of Ioni Raptor, forcing him to live on his own and try and scrape through the harshest part of the dry season. Fortunately, he had snipped out the body of a Limaeosaurus that had died from the heat. He had to share it with a flock of Ovo-Raptors, three-meter-long bird-like scavengers, the carcass was 15 meters long, so there was more than enough flesh to go around, so he fattened up and took a long sleep. A few days later, he is enjoying the first shower of the wet season. It is heavy, and the ground is soaking up every last drop. The young Scorpiovenator marches through his patch of territory, making his way back to the Limaeosaurus carcass to feed again. The rain is so heavy, he almost walks straight into the animals he fears the most, the pair of Aeoni Raptor. The two Megaraptors turn their heads and lock eyes with the Scorpiovenator. They were drawn to the rotting sauropod carcass as well, 
but with prey coming to them, decided to go with the closer option. Scorpio Venator turned and ran back the way he came. He couldn't hear if the two carnivores were after him, so he reared his head up and saw they were charging through the undergrowth, hot on his tail. The marshlands they were in had thick foliage, so both species struggled to pick paths and often had to bash their way through. One of the Ioni raptor ducked under a branch but slipped on the wet earth, splashing down into the mud. The young Scorpio Venator didn't see this. He had to concentrate purely on what was in front of himself. He got caught in a tangle of low-hanging vines, but pushed himself through, only to misstep and slip on a rock before he too crashed into the muck. Trying to stand, he caught a glimpse of the remaining pursuer right before it jumped on top of him, pressing down its right leg onto his side. Terrified, he cried out and flailed his head and legs, trying to hit the species that had killed more of his siblings than any other. He got a lucky kick in, pushing the Ioni Raptor back about a metre, he wanted to rise and run away, but as he stood, his attacker was lunging forward again. Without thinking, Scorpio Venator opened his mouth and bit down, catching the Ioni Raptor on the shoulder, making it yelp in surprise. Still terrified, the Scorpio Venator threw his head from side to side, dragging the startled carnivore across the ground, and to his shock, it wasn't that difficult. The young male threw the Ioni Raptor away from him. And while it didn't go airborne, it still flew across the ground, almost a full body length away, slamming his head into the base of a tree. Scorpio Ovenator took in deep breaths, his heart thumping in his ears. How did he do that? How is he still alive? It was only now that fear gave way to calm that it clicked. He was the same size as the Ioni Raptor now, and despite not being fully grown, he was still heavier and stronger than them. The second of the Ioni Raptor caught up and looked over its injured mate, then to the Scorpio Venator, its confidence suddenly turning to caution. His heart rate slowing, the male Scorpio Venator looked between his two attackers. He was still afraid of them, but a new wave of confidence was rising deep within him, and he had to capitalize on it, now before his aggressors regrouped. He planted his feet, stood as tall as he could, and let out a blood-curdling snarl. The same one his mother used years before. It was the first time in his life he had made such a noise, but the results were effective. The Ioni Raptor lost their nerve, gathered up, and slinked away, baring their teeth and glaring at the now mature Scorpio Venator. For a while, he stood alone in the rain, listening in case anything else came out to attack him, but nothing did. Then, he began to walk towards where he knew the large carcass still lay, but he did not nervously tiptoe as he had before. He strode through the marsh confidently, alert for danger, but no longer overwhelmed by it. The only surviving member of his clutch was now truly ready to take on the world. He would never be the largest or most powerful creature in his home, but he had survived long enough to know what to expect, and from now on little would surprise him. Standing alone, he would continue his lineage, and no longer just run, but stand and fight. Hello fellow travelers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down one of the lesser known South American abilosaurs, Scorpio Venator. The holotype of Scorpio Venator was discovered on a farm in the Nuquin province of Patagonia. The skeleton was almost complete and was transported to the Ernesto Bachman Paleontological Museum to be properly studied. A formal description was published in 2009, naming it as a new genus, that being Scorpio Venator. Bustingorii, the genus name meaning scorpion hunter, not because it ate scorpions, but because of how many scorpions the research team dealt with during its excavation. The species name is after Manuel Bustingori, the owner of the farm the specimen was found on, who passed away before the paper was published. Scorpio Venator belonged to the Huancor Formation, dating to the Cenomanian stage of the Late Cretaceous around 95 million years ago. While it is mostly complete, in terms of the tail, we only have up to the 12th caudal vertebra, 
so the animal has been measured at 4.3 meters. Using close relatives as references, the full length of Scorpio venator is estimated to be between 6 and 6.2 meters in length. It stood 2 meters toward the hips and weighed between 880 and 910 kilograms. Scorpio venator was an abelosaurid, more specifically, it was a part of the group known as Brachyrostra, meaning short snouts. This group is comprised of all abelosaurs more closely related to Carnotaurus from Argentina than to Majungasaurus from Madagascar. Taking an overall look at Scorpio venator itself, we can see that it has very typical build for its family. A short blunt snout, tiny forearms, robust hind legs, and a tube-like body. Let's take a closer look at the skull. It was 54 centimeters in length, and was short and deep, with 19 teeth along the upper jaw, the most of any abelosaur. While in terms of shape, they are very similar to its close relatives, but the wrinkles and serrations on the enamel are closer to those of the Carcharodontids, so would have been excellent at slicing. The skull is noted for having a rough texture to it, that is seen in other abelosaurs, but Scorpio venators is especially rugose. These textures are believed to have been the imprints of scales, showing just how well preserved this specimen is. Interestingly, the ornamentation is very similar to another species from Niger, called Rugops, which is known only from a skull. Also preserved is evidence that Scorpio venator had very sensitive tissue all along its face, with pits and grooves where large amounts of blood vessels and nerves would have been connected to. Moving down to the arms, we can see they were absolutely tiny. So tiny, it's debated whether they could move them in any meaningful way, with some believing they were completely vestigial, or weren't even visible outside of the body, like the hind limbs of whales. Its own hind legs, however, are a different story. The femur is thick and robust, appearing straight when looked at from the front, but slightly concave when viewed from the side. The ilia has deep, blade-like protrusions that held the muscles used for extending and flexing the leg, so it must have been very large and powerful. Scorpio venator belonged to the Hwinkle Formation, which despite not being well known, has produced some very large and very strange dinosaur species. When Scorpio venator was roaming around, the area was a mostly arid landscape with seasonal streams, dominated by gymnosperms, ferns, mosses, and angiosperms. Some of the other species found in this formation include Argentinosaurus, a titanosaur, and one of the largest land animals to have ever lived. Choconsaurus, another titanosaur, Limaesaurus, one of several Rebacosaurid sauropods, Aeoniraptor, a 6 meter long possible Megaraptor, Trolchosaurus, another abelosaur around the same size as Scorpio venator, Overoraptor, a small Paravian, and to top things off, Taurovenator, Moraxes, and Mapusaurus, three massive Carcharodontosaurs. It should be noted that not all of these dinosaurs would have necessarily interacted, as some are from the lower part of the formation while others are from the upper section. Scorpio venator would have filled the medium-sized predator role, likely going after small to medium-sized prey like the Ornithischian Chuckasaurus, and the young, old, or weak of larger ones. Abelosaurs in general were quite successful across the southern continents, and even got a foothold in some of the northern continents as well, despite not looking as deadly as some other theropod families, and having such hilariously small arms. Scorpio venator was likely a menace to many other creatures it shared its environment with. A strongly built generalist predator, that given the number of other carnivores close to its size, likely competed fiercely for both space and resources, while mostly avoiding both the massive Carcharodontosaurs and sauropods. But what do you think about Scorpio venator? And for my question of the week, in regards to the prominent facial scales that itself and other abelosaurs had, do you think they were for defensive purposes or for display purposes? Perhaps even used for intraspecific combat, battling members of the same species. What lesser known dinosaur would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.